An international team of scientists has revealed something absolutely amazing, the indignation of Darwin. In March 1882, a few weeks before he died, the father of the theory of evolution wrote a letter which was addressed to us. Hamed at future generations, with all my strength, my heart, and my indignation, I, Charles Darwin, born on February 1809 in Shrewsbury, Shire, declare to those who will hear me today and tomorrow, our decision makers rely on false biological principles in order to justify a policy based on the survival of the fittest. The may the best men win Law is a lie, a huge lie, seeking to justify the capital crisis, the waves of exclusions and eliminations. My theory of natural selection has never been designed to be applied to human societies. I have always been careful not to extrapolate my biological thesis to the social world. My theory is subverted, used for mercenary purposes. It has been reduced to the idea of struggle for life. This is pure nonsense and manipulation. I am at the end of my life but my anger keeps growing. The country is in full industrial revolution and soon the whole world will be too. This growth diverts my works in order to justify competition. The struggle for life, economic and social disparity, vital competition, the domination of underdeveloped peoples, we are led to believe that what matters is to defeat others, struggle, win. But a winner is a loser manufacturer. To tell the truth, we will have to destroy competition. I don't have to be stronger than others. I have to be stronger thanks to others. These ideas of power and development are a machine leading to death, poverty, slavery. A few men have decided so for their profit. And in this man's mind, anything that can be used to justify their lust for power is grasped, twisted and spread as gospel. I don't deny struggle for life, but I maintain that the progressive development of the animal kingdom, and especially of humankind, results from mutual support rather than mutual fight. The development of the living can follow many roads. The ones of mutual aid are often taken from backs to symbiosis. Mutual aid is worth our respect and above all our curiosity. In my work, The Descent of Man, I report how in many animal societies 
struggle is replaced by cooperation and how this leads to the development of intellectual and moral abilities which ensure better living conditions to the spaces. The most able ones are not the strongest or the most skillful ones, but the ones who learn together in order to support one another for the prosperity of the community. I wish I could have spread my studies in this direction. I encourage my peers to explore this way without further delay. I subscribe to Russian geologist naturalist Pyotr Kropotkin. For him, the best adapted ones are not the most aggressive, but the most united ones. They're crouching. She's going for him. She's going for him. She got him. Oh, she did. She got him. Whoa! He swatted at him, kicked at him. He's kicking at him. Look, he's right. kicking at him. Ooh! Ooh! The boy. Gee, they chased him away. Yeah, yeah. If they look the one, you see, they look the one. Come on, Doc, let's go. 